Welcome to another edition of Neighborhood Watch. I'm Matt. And I'm Pat. Welcome, everybody. I'm Abe. How's it going, San Ramon? I'm Brett. All right, guys. We have a special treat tonight. Um, we have two guests with us, the father, son, uh, Don and Josh, uh, Ruth. Um, Josh works at Knob Hill, and he recently wrote a letter um, explaining how important uh, uh, establishment of Knob Hill is to, you know, people of San Ramon. And um, this is in response to the Marketplace Project. And so we invited them both on to just talk a little bit about it. And so I'll start off. Uh, welcome, uh, Josh and Don, to our show. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Thank you very much. We really appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, so first off, Josh, um, if you want to just explain a little bit, a bit about uh, yourself uh, and then, you know, your time at Knob Hill. Well, good evening, guys. Um... I'm Josh Ruth, and uh, I um, I work with Knob Hill because it's my passion, and I like to help others. And my community is more important to understand how work working Knob Hill is pretty cool. It's fun. I've been doing almost uh, this year for 21 years. Yeah, so 21 fun. years. Wow. Yeah. Very good. But it's a great place to work. And I love it. So Josh and Don, I mean, with that kind of tenure there at <coughs> Knob Hill, I mean, you obviously li you've lived in San Ramon a lot longer. Um, you know, how does something potentially like this project that we're all, I, I would say most of San Ramon is against. I mean, how would that, how, would, how is that going to impact you? Because I, I believe what you wrote in your letter, you, you're, you live close, you can get to work easily back and forth and like you said you've been there so long i mean if, if that were to change what's the impact for you and, and, and your fellow employees there well that's a good question it is i'm there i i live in newcastle mm -hmm. development and i my commute is too easy <laughs> and yeah. uh, and i the, without the knock hill i would lose my job mm-hmm and all employees at the store now would lose their job. And I would have to, you know, look for somewhere else to be. I'd rather stick where I'm at because right. I know my family there. Rayleigh's and Knob Hill is a fa our family. So it's very, very important to stick around. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And also for like us shoppers, like when we see you all the time, you, you know, you're, you always put a smile on our face and you like, you know, you, it's just good to feel like a family ourselves when we walk in. It's not just the transaction. We actually have conversations. So we enjoy, you know, yep. I would chime in too and say you're, you're pretty darn good at your job too. For sure. <laughs> and, and I usually get a joke or two on the way out too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's right. It's really, it's really tough right now. The last year was real tough, man. Mm -hmm. we'll wearing, a mask every, wearing a mask every day for eight hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this, rough. This last year in my career was a toughie because mm -hmm. <laughs> I never experienced this rough time. But we're gonna get through it, and and I I have faith in you know I think we're gonna stick around. Cool. Good. I think you got the support of the community behind you, and and twenty one years anywhere these days is commendable for anybody because we all know how the job market goes and people hop around. Uh, Don, question for you. Uh, just at a higher level, kind of maybe being behind the scenes, what's the latest update that you might have for us regarding the development that you know? Um, have any Has anything moved forward? Has the city reconsidered anything? I know you guys are going to be talking, uh, passing out more flyers this weekend. Can you fill us in on all that? Yeah, sure. Just uh, at a very high level, the uh, developer um, put forth a concept review on January 5th. And it was met with resistance by the community. There were 265 letters, 263 were against. And it seemed to me that even the planning commission had a lot of questions about this project. So they advised the developer, normally the next step would be to just file a formal application and then move forward with the project mm -hmm. uh, approval process. But they advised the developer to go back and, and maybe reconsider and come back with perhaps another concept review before the application. 
Now, the city has not heard back from the developer since January 5th, so in those, in those two months. So we honestly don't know exactly what the developer's plans are. We don't know whether they're reconsidering and considering coming back with a, a, a new idea, uh, maybe a scaled down idea, but even that, would, we would lose Knob Hill, you would, you would think. Um, and it's always possible that, that you know, at some point they're gonna decide not to do it. However, we believe that they are just in the process of preparing their application because they've talked to their tenants like Sports Clips and the pharmacy and the cleaners about you know, the fact that they're gonna to need to find other space mm -hmm. because they're planning to tear down the building. So just based on that, we're assuming for now that they're moving forward with, you know, coming back with either an application for the project as originally planned or for an alternative project, but for a project. Do they, what's the timeline? What, what do you, what do you get the sense of their, their timeline? If they're already not renewing leases, is this something that's immediate or? Well, we would, they, we would think, I mean, we, we think that assuming they move forward with the application that it would be a, maybe a year before they would demolish the buildings because the, the application is very involved and they would have to do a traffic study and, and a environmental impact report and things like that. So that usually takes at least six months to go through that process. So we're thinking that assuming they're moving forward that it would be a year. Now, one thing I wanna mention, there's been some rumors around town that, um, that Knob Hill wasn't interested in staying anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. And that is absolutely not true. I've been in touch with the Executive Director of Public Affairs for Raley's, which owns Knob Hill, and uh, they are committed to the city, They're committed, they prefer to stay in the, in the uh, marketplace. And my understanding is they're in the process of preparing a letter to the mayor stating that so that it will squash any rumors that are out there that, that they just don't plan to stick around anyway. That's yeah, good information. Well, it's funny because the developer, the owner, TRC, their name is TRC Retail. I mean, they, are, they specialize in retail. They do not specialize in multifamily or anything like that. So it, it must, maybe it's a new venture for them. Maybe COVID caused them to take a different focus. I don't know, but... Uh, or we think you that know. perhaps they're just going to build the apartments and sell up, sell yeah. off. That, that what what is the, the, the sort of the summary scope of the project? And I, I know we know, but we've heard about it, but just for everyone out there. Yeah, it's a 284 unit, five story apartment complex uh, that will sit on the parcel of land <clears throat> that Knob Hill, Starbucks, and the small stores to the left of Knob Hill currently reside on, but it'll be a five-story facade facing, um, you know, the rest of, of the development. So Hop Yard and all that will be sitting right under a big five-story facade. Mm -hmm. There'll be 284 apartments, 32 of them are low and very low income. Um, and there's also a 554 space parking structure wow it's five stories that the apartments are actually built around so mm -hmm. the parking structure is in the center and the apartments are all around this five-story parking structure hmm. and so there would be so there's no room for a knob bill in that plan no i you know one of the alternatives might be you know if, if it makes sense you could always you, you could put commercial space in the first floor. Yeah, and then build over it. And and build over it and make that your knob hill. You know, it, it's yet to be seen whether the developer would want to do that and or whether it makes sense for knob hill. I the research that I've done is grocery stores in that kind of a setting aren't always successful. I mean, sometimes in big cities in New York City and San Francisco they yeah. do that, but it's not often done in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. It's it's a a monstrous looking uh, plan they came out with, with so far. Yeah. Um, awesome. yeah. So if what, I could just say, we. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say what's what's we haven't heard from them yet. The city hasn't heard from them yet. I was just wondering, is there a certain time they have to get back 
or is this? No, there isn't really a time that they have to get back. They could come back. The problem is, is that once they do come back, we might only have two or three weeks notice. Oh, wow. and, and then there's the, the formal application hearing. And so that's why we've got this committee that we've started. And we've got over 50 uh, active members on the committee, including a couple of former city officials mm -hmm. and a couple of attorneys that are helping us. Okay. And so we're working hard on the assumption that they're going to be coming back with the proposal, you know, one of these days fairly soon. If they don't, fine, we'll put, we'll put ourselves on hold and wait and see. But we've already spent six weeks working on this. We've got over 6,000 flyers out and uh, we're, we're doing, there's a lot of research that we're doing uh, on the Senate bill that they're building this under, on uh, traffic uh, congestion, mm -hmm. air quality, uh, the need for grocery stores and essential household items, et cetera. So we're planning to prepare a significant document to present to the city uh, on why the citizens are against this project. Mm -hmm. And it takes, you know, we're all just doing this as volunteers yeah. and it takes, it's gonna take several weeks. It's already taken several weeks, it might take two or three months to put this together. Mm -hmm. So we're working hard on it um, so that, you know, if and when the time comes, we'll be prepared. Um, you know, we'll get it to a point where if we then need to sit back and wait for three months until they ask for a meeting, that's fine. But we're working hard to be ready for it. Okay. If people want to help, if you're taking any help, who would they contact? Yeah, the, so thank you for that. Um, we have a, uh, an email address. The name of our committee is Citizens Against Marketplace Apartment Development. So the acronym is CAMPAD, C-A-M-P-A-D, mm -hmm. and then the number one at Comcast.net. Okay. And if anybody wants to help or volunteer, we appreciate it. Um, the other thing so, I would say is that since we started passing out the flyers, I mentioned that we had 265 letters had been sent to the city prior to the concept review on January 5th. And they made a big point at the concept review. And they, by the way, it's kind of surprised me. Uh, they read every single one of these letters. Wow. The mayor reads them, the mm -hmm. city council men and women read them, and every planning commissioner mm -hmm. reads every letter. They're not summarized and then submitted to them or something. Wow. So as a result of our flyers that we passed out, we've got another 200 and some odd letters that they've already received or emails. So now we're up to close to 500. Great. Frankly, yeah. we'd like to get double that. We'd like to get a thousand. Every email helps. It counts. Of course. We keep track of them. And it doesn't have to be a big, long, formal letter. It can be just a paragraph saying, hey, I'm against this for these two reasons. Yeah, it was interesting because Pat and I joined that uh, concept meeting. And it was like unanimously everyone was against except for two people. Yeah. Yeah, there was about two saying, people on there saying, it was, yeah. oh, it's, we need it, you know, da, da, da. But uh, so I got a question, Josh, uh, going back to you and your time at Knob Hill, 21 years. Um, how long have you and your father been and your family been San Ramon residents? I've been, I've been in San Ramon since 1980. 1980. So do you remember when Knob Hill was down the road uh it's which is now houses but it was uh there was that old shopping center there with the round table pizza and oh yeah the donut oh, yeah. shop and the liquor store yeah i remember that because uh, i used to go down there to the knob hill i sat on the side of the store watching uh -huh. them work you so, don't work at that store though did you <laughs> no i just work over here it yeah. was his goal from the time he was 16 to mm -hmm. work at knob hill Instead of getting nice. a car, he got a three-wheel scooter. Yep. So he could get around better than you know, up and down the hills easier than in his wheelchair. And he used to go down there when he was 16 and watch him. And he that's where he wanted to work. Wow. So when did you get when did you start? That's awesome. I started in October uh, 2nd, 2000. Okay. Okay. Wow. And well, you would remember that that plaza, Don, and, and you too, Josh like where I live now and we're Matt and Abe and Brett we, like it's a lot closer to our house but uh that was a great little plaza with the round table in there and the yeah uh yeah. the ice cream store yeah the ice yeah. cream yeah. store yeah. Yeah. 
And it, it originally was an alpha beta. <laughs> <laughs> so going down memory lane. But Josh, that's great. How many of your workers, your coworkers there have been long-term employees, say like 10 years or more there at that Knob Hill? Well, one of my managers just left a few months ago. He's okay. been with the company for 41 years. Wow. wow. And he's still going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a lot of them, Josh. A lot of them, like Carlos and, mm -hmm. and um, Denise, Denise. Uh, what's, Sam. What's the butcher's name? 20, 25, 30 years. Wow. What's the butcher's name? The, there's a butcher that, that I, he's a great guy. He always helps me out. I mean, I, everyone does there, but. Raider okay. Joe? Yeah. He's yeah. not there anymore. Yeah, oh, he's he, not? He, he, yeah, he left <laughs> recently. <laughs> he went okay. To, well, he's a good guy. Yeah. Well, that's great. I think, you know, it's great because Rayleigh's Knob Hill, they're, they are Northern California owned chain. Like you said, they're family. And it feels like that when you go in there because you know people, you see familiar faces. And it's a lot different than when you go in any other, any other market here in town, I think. So it's important that we get the word out here and, and, and make a stand. Yeah, they're, they're a very good employer. They, they really help the community. They help the schools. As you, as you know, they, they hire um, people with disabilities. Um, and it's just, it's, it's such a critical part of all of those employees' lives. There's about 75 employees there that are union employees that would lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. And for people like Josh, it's not possible for them to go to the nearest union grocery store for Knob Hill or Raley's, which are in Martinez and Walnut Creek. And then, yeah. uh, you know, doesn't drive on freeways or anything, okay. you know, to commute that long. I might, I might just add, if I could just take 60 seconds, just uh, since you guys know Josh and I'm so proud of him. I want you to know that when when he was born, you know, my ex-wife and I adopted Josh when he was just two days old, not knowing he had a disability. We adopted because we were told that because of a genetic problem my ex had, that we had an increased chance of having a disabled child. Uh, when Josh was a year old, we moved back to the Bay Area. And uh, when he wasn't developing, uh, took him to Children's Hospital and the doctors told us that he had been born with cerebral palsy. And they told me that his prognosis was that he would be a quadriplegic. Mm. that he wouldn't be able to talk, and if he did, it would be unintelligible, and that he wouldn't have the ability to go to school. And that's what we started with when he was a year old. So, you know, he graduated from San Ramon High in, what, 97, Josh? 1997, yeah. But he worked hard for 17 years, every day, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. To, uh, to get where he is. And uh, it's, it's because of all of his hard work that he's been able to become a productive member of the community. He lives in his own house, he lives by himself. Um, you know, we're very close to him, we're just a few blocks away. He drives a car, he bought that BMW brand new for cash with the money that he earned, he saved 10 years for it. Wow. Um, and we're very proud as you can tell of what he's accomplished. But this job is so important to him and to mm -hmm. the others like him that, that work there. Yeah. Or any, you know, any of the employees that work there. So it's, it's you know, it just doesn't make sense to us that, that this needs to happen. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. amazing. That's, it's touching. And, you know, we're, we're proud of him too. And, and, and yeah, we, we wanted him to come on and, Cause that letter that was written was like, wow, it gave like goosebumps for all of us. And we had to go in there. I just walked in on Sunday. and was like, dude, I got to I got to invite you on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Amazing. Great. Always to see Josh when we go in there, even way better now to know, to know the backstory. Right. So yeah. Thank you for sharing that Don, because uh, it's, I think it's very important. I mean, it's inspiring and it's, there's somebody that's, definitely made a difference in the community and can continue to do so as you know as long as there's that path and a place to work that's right there so yeah uh, you know we really appreciate you guys coming on and sharing this and we'll continue to to discuss it well thank you yeah, for and, uh, I guess, yeah, uh, hey, 
And Josh, thank you. you. A lot of the food that my family eats goes through your hands for many years. <laughs> yeah. And I really appreciate That's that. That's a lot of food. It's awesome. <laughs> um, what I've been so to, uh, to our viewers, you know, I, I think everyone gets busy, right? And we've got a million things going on. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that most people are on our side and don't want this to happen. Mm -hmm. So they just need to find, you know, 10 minutes to sit down and write your email, write your letter and get it in and, you know, don't let this opportunity pass us by and, you know, make your voice heard. So thanks again. I just, I just, uh, I just hope this doesn't happen. Just, I pray every day for it. I, just, I love my job there. It's, it's a blessing to be with people and know mm -hmm. you folks. Customers come and make my day. And, and if I'm having a bad day, you put a smile on my face and I move on. So thank you for That's your awesome. time to come in. Same to us. Um, Don, real quick before we leave. So it's campad1 at comcast.net, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so, guys, we really appreciate you coming on late tonight. And uh, we'll post this tomorrow morning. And uh, I'll send uh, the link to you, Josh. Uh, have your cell phone. And so you can see it, and uh, and uh, we wish the very luck, and we're here to help uh, uh, if we can do anything. Last, last thing, so this this weekend, so you're doing something this weekend, right? Just wanted to mention that. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're just, you know, we we spent the last three or four weeks passing out six thousand five hundred flyers door to door wow. around the city. This weekend, just on Friday and Saturday from four to six p.m., and then Sunday and Monday most of the day, which are their busier days. We're going to be at the shopping center passing out flyers. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, Thank we you will. For your time. Yep. We'll get this posted up on uh, not only YouTube, YouTube, but our Facebook channel and uh, next door. You know, get the word out and on next door. So that's great. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, really appreciate you, guys. you having on. Thank you. Thank yep. you very much, you guys. Take care. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Take care.